as I said, no, a primary difference between me and other spokespersons is I'm not just a lawyer, I was a practicing lawyer and very active practitioner at that. Now, the president is no different. He practiced criminal law. He was a public prosecutor. And it's a matter, really, of um, uh, making the president realize that criminal law is actually a manner of enforcing human rights. Because when you prosecute a case of murder, you do so because a murderer violated the right to life. Good morning, Secretary. Yes, Secretary, sir. you're known to be an uh, international law expert. And now, as presidential spokesperson, how would you explain uh, President Duterte's frequent tirades against the European Union, the United Nations, and the United States? Well, it's, it's, it's uh, part of international relations. No? Um, when the president complains about um, certain acts of um, sovereign states, he does so with a reason. No? Um, in the case of the European U Union, he felt that there was a violation of the UN Charter, specifically the principle of non-interference, no? because the drug war is a sovereign undertaking, and um, it is a sovereign um, undertaking. No? So it's only understandable that the president expressed displeasure where he feels that this tenet of non-interference is being violated by other countries. Do you think is it, that it is necessary to curse them, Secretary? I think people should get used to the president by now, and they must be used to the president after almost a year and a half. Secretary, on another issue, uh, you were quoted as saying in a report over the weekend that uh, you want to advise the president, that's why you entered uh, in uh, cabinet. Uh, what would you advise him on uh, the issue of human rights, given that he has this uh, negative reputation in terms of human rights before the international community? Well, um, as I said, no, a primary difference between me and other spokespersons is I'm not just a lawyer, I was a practicing lawyer and very active practitioner at that. Now, the president is no different. He practiced criminal law. He was a public prosecutor. And it's a matter, really, of um, uh, making the president realize that criminal law is actually a manner of enforcing human rights. Because when you prosecute a case of murder, you do so because a murderer violated the right to life. That kind of an advice, I think, no, would be appropriate. That there is no incompatibility between his public, um, between his public policies, his um, directives, and human rights itself. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, thank you. Next, Rose Novelari. Good morning, Uli, sir. Hi, Hi sir. again. Ano po yung statement ng palasyo tungkol po dun sa New York City attack po kahapon? Yung lone wolf attack po ng isang truck driver. I saw the, the statement from the palace. There was a statement issued. Um, we, of course, express our uh, condolence to the victims. Um, and um, we have advised um, the Filipinos in New York to inform the closest um, consulate if there are any Filipino casualties. Um, but beyond that, you know, this attack proves that terrorism is really a worldwide problem. It's also, I think, attributed to the same terrorist group that is responsible for Marawi. So this again proves that uh, the issue of uh, terrorism had ceased to be a domestic issue, that there is a need for concerted um, action among states in dealing with the uh, menace of modern-day terrorism. Sir, ano po yung maipapayo natin sa publiko na para po maiwasan yung ganitong klaseng pag-atake sa Pilipinas? Dahil po sa Amerika, yung U.S. Transportation and Security Agency, nagbigay po sila ng babala sa mga uh, truck owners or uh, vehicle owners po na maging mapanuri po sa halimbawa po sa pag-upgrade po ng mga sasakyang malalaki at yung pagpapaarkila po sa mga taong hindi po nagbibigay ng kanilang background. So, paano po ito pwedeng ma-apply po rito sa Pilipinas? Wala alam niyo po, kinakailangan maging mapagmasid ang ating mga taong bayan. Kung meron kayo nakikita na kayo nahinalang mga pakete na naiiwan sa mga lugar na pampubliko, ipagbigay alam po natin kaagad sa ating mga otoridad. No? I think this is a kind of awareness that we need to develop as a people. When I was a student in the UK, that kind of awareness was prevalent amongst the um, British um, um, public. No? So the same kind of vigilance is required amongst all Filipinos now. No? Let's be vigilant, let's be observant, and let's not hesitate to inform the authorities in case we believe there is a threat coming from anything or anyone. Last two questions, Ina Andolong and Hana Sancho. Bakit si Philip hindi mo tinawag? Tatawagin ko, sir. <laughs> Ayaw mo tawagin si Philip, no? Siyempre, tatawagin mo siya dahil pinagpipiyastahan ako. Oh, oh. Yes. Good morning, sir. 
Uh, yes, ma'am. Sir, the Food and Drug Administration is expected to issue soon a decision on some uh, question contraceptives. Ito po yung mga, ide-declare daw po ito ng mga non-aborti fashions. In effect, it is expect, this decision is expected to uh, finally lift the TRO on uh, these contraceptives, which has been preventing the full implementation of the RH law. Can we get your thoughts on this, especially since in his last honor, the president did talk about this? Hallelujah, it's all I can say. Because this should have been done a long time ago. And this is the only thing that the Supreme Court wants anyway, so that we can fully implement the RH law. As you know, the president is fully committed to enforcing the RH law. Population management is important to, uh, to um, economic growth. And... Um, with this development, I see no reason why the Supreme Court will continue with this temporary restraining order. Sir, in that same sauna, uh, the President said or that uh, this batch of contraceptives were about to expire the month after. And uh, he gave a directive to, well, now former Health Secretary Ubia to distribute those um, contraceptives. May we know the status? Natuloy po ba yon, or did it just go to waste? Can I invoke a conflict of interest as far as Secretary Ubiel is concerned? <laughs> but um, there's good reasons for that because I really believe that uh, reproductive health could have been implemented earlier had he ordered the FDA to do this earlier rather than file a motion for reconsideration. But that again is a, uh, um, a difference of legal opinion on matter of strategy. But we can see now that this process that the FDA recently concluded could easily have been done earlier. Um, had the DOH press the FDA to do so. So, naipamigay po yun, sir? I have no information. I'll find out. Um, but you see, as I said, I have a conflict of interest there. So, let's ask the incoming secretary. Okay. And I, just uh, a different topic, sir, I have to ask. How long, sir, do you see yourself serving as spokesman? Because um, in some of the president's uh, speeches, he would refer to you, although in a joking manner, as a senator. I was just wondering if... Um, is that a hint of the president maybe having any um, plans for 2019 which may affect your um, um, position as spokesman? Alam mo, itong mga pangyayari <laughs> na natalaga akong spokesperson, ang motto ko ngayon, dine will be done. Sino ba makakalaay maging spokesperson ako? None of you probably expected it in the same way that I did not expect it. So in the same way that I do not know what I'll be doing tomorrow, I leave it to the Lord. Meanwhile, I'll just do the best that I can do with this challenge and this opportunity given, and I hope it will be a fun process with all of you there. Thanks. Hannah, last. Nako, ayan na si Philip. <laughs> Buti na lang kaibigan ko si Philip. Sir, before kay Philip. He will be gentle. Uh. Morning, Secretary. Before kay Philip, Hannah Pop, Sunshine uh, Media. Sir, tatanong ko lang, sir, regarding dun sa sinabi ng... Uh, uh, ni Ambassador Kim na hindi po daw totoo na yung CIA may plano pong destabilization plot against kay President Duterte which is contradict po dun sinabi ng Pangulong Duterte at I think may isa ring White House official na nag-deny din po nito. Statement po ng pala, sir. Well, if that is true, we're happy. But if the President says that there is, I have no position to dispute what the President says. The President has access to information that he only has access to. I have not seen it, but I trust and believe that my president will not say anything without factual basis. I stand by whatever my president says. Thank you, sir. Oh, okay, and Philip. Hi. Sir, good morning. Hi, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Long way. Uh, sir, may update na po ba kay uh, dating spokesperson Abelia kung saan siya mapupunta? Wala po akong alam sa totoo lang, although Minsan ko lang siya nakausap at nagte-text message, nagte-text po kami para sa uh, transition. No? Pero ang problema ko po talaga is, um, he is um, a good friend of mine. Um, you know that we belong to the same church. He is one of our pastors. I think he did a brilliant job as spokesperson. I don't think I can ever be as calm as Secretary um, um, Abelia. And that's why he's a very difficult act to follow. I have asked for his prayers, and I will pray for him. But I'm sure there's something in store for Secretary Abelia. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you for... That was mild. <laughs> okay. Sir, uh, follow up lang po on two things about uh, Jap Japanese loans uh, as a result of the visit and uh, comfort women. Because President Duterte said last year that he will raise this issue with the Japanese. Uh, I'm curious if 
the issue of comfort women has been raised, considering that Japan already agreed to a compensation deal with the uh, South Korean comfort women. Uh, I'm almost our, sure. Our comfort women don't enjoy the same benefits, sir. So, has this been discussed on the table or anything on the table concerning our comfort women? I'm almost sure this was not discussed in the Japan trip. I do not know if the president will bring it up, but in my personal capacity, I will confer with Secretary um, Alan Cayetano of the Secretary of the Department of Foreign Affairs. So, sir, second. Uh, you are also with the President during his visit to China, po? Yes. And China al also had uh, granted oh. us loans. But uh, I've seen figures, uh, the interest rates of the Japanese, it's like 0.01% to 0.03 or 1.15% is the highest uh, as compared with China as high as 6%. So would you say the Japanese gave a more generous uh, deal uh, for the Philippines? I think the rates will speak for themselves, but the decision on where we will purchase and how much interest we will pay will really depend on which country will provide the best um, commodity for us. So I trust that our authorities will make the correct decisions. No? And let's accord them that presumption. Uh, delicious. <laughs>